What's going on everybody? This is Phil and this is part two of CSI 8 tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to cover um, a few things that are important in the preferences up here in the little picture of the gears and we'll go through a few of these options. I'm not going to go through every single item here, but just some important things to understand. All right, so the bottom part of this second tab that I'm going to review is really only for customers that have uh, CareStream CBCT and CareStream Digital Impression Scanners. If you don't have that, then it's not going to really apply to you, so you can kind of fast forward a bit. This is the default program that will be launched when you double click an image. So if it's a, if it's a model from uh, CS3600, CS3700, um, when you double click it, it's going to launch Mesh Viewer. And you can have that default selection to uh, CS model, CS mesh viewer, or CS imaging. And I'll show you what CS imaging is in a minute. Uh, I generally prefer to have mesh viewer on all of these items. And you'll want to change the 3D from CS imaging, which is the default, to CS 3D imaging. Okay, If you don't have CS 3D imaging installed, then you're not going to see that option there. Same thing goes for mesh viewer. And this is also a newer version of CSI 8 where we have a wax up where you can import any STL file from any digital impression scanner and have it launch Mesh Viewer as its default viewer. So CS Imaging is just a quick viewer when you're looking at either cone beams or digital impression files. So for example, um, again, I have Mesh Viewer that is the default. So if I double click this, it's going to launch Mesh Viewer. This is going to be my digital impression file. I can actually filter that down. If I can still launch other programs by right clicking and selecting which program I want to use to view that image. And what CS Imaging is, is just a quick viewer of that digital impression file. So it just takes a second for it to render and now I can view my digital impression file in a very basic viewer. Same thing goes for uh, by the way, this is my back arrow to my browser. So once I launch into imaging to get back to my browser, I click that back arrow. Okay, this is where I can launch into my viewer, and this is back to the browser. I can do the same thing with volumes. So I can actually right click and say uh, open with CS imaging. It takes a second for it to render, and you can see here I can see my 3D uh, rendering, or I can switch to this icon over here down below, and it's going to give me my axial slice, which I can use my mouse wheel just for a quick view of that volume and, and only an axial slice. And it will always say preview because you're not looking at the entire volume. You're just looking at a preview. OK. One nice new feature that uh, CSIA allows you to do is I can actually go into a different patient here that has multiple digital impression files. And what I can do is first um, launch one with CS Imaging. And when that renders, I have my file here. And what I can do is open up my image gallery down below. That's going to show you the rest of the images I have for that patient. I can left click and drag that image up and let go. And I can actually view multiple digital impression files simultaneously in the software. So you can show patients before and after or progress uh, during their treatment. Okay, let's close these. Okay, so let's go back into the preferences for a couple of other options. And um, under this tab, under your save tab, you can see we've got automatically save image modifications and automatically saving all new images. All right, so images are automatically saved. I'm not gonna cover this option right this minute, uh, but I will cover automatically open last use FMS template. All right, I believe the default is this uh, is checked. And if I select okay, you'll see what that default does. I can go back to my browser. Let's select a different patient. And I can also launch the browser by either double clicking on the patient's name here or hitting my arrow. So either way, when I launch into this patient, you can see it automatically opens up the last use FMS template. And you might not want that one, 
and then you have to close it and then open a new one. So if we go back and go to save, we can deselect this so that will not happen. And then it's just an extra step that you don't have to do. Okay. Um, let's continue on in a couple of other options in the preferences. Um, let's see, I'm going to cover this one next. So FMS editor. So this is actually where you can create and modify your templates now. So we can see here, my FMS editor is right here and I can go into it and here's all of my default selections or my standard selections that come with the program. Note. Down below, you can select modify or delete. You cannot modify or delete the standard templates that come with the program. If you want to modify one of those templates, you must first create a copy of that template. So you can select copy, and then you can actually rename it, and then you can modify that template. All right, so you cannot edit or delete the standard but you can create a copy and then modify those. Okay, and the last thing I'm gonna show you in the preferences, at least for this particular video, is under the service tools, this password to input, which will uh, populate some additional options for you. The password is 2748, which stands for CSI8, if you looked at your phone, for example. So 2748, and then you select submit. And now I've got a few other options. Now. These are um, not selected at default. I believe this one is at default. Uh, and I'll go through what these are, or a couple of them at least for now. So if I don't select this option, then you'll never be able to delete images. So you might want to restrict that on some of your workstations with some of your team members. That's really up to you and what you want to do and how you want to do it. Um, but by checking this box, you'll be able to right click on an image and then delete it. Um, and you'll be able to delete an entire patient card, which I'll show you that really quickly too. I'll just exit out of this, go back to my browser, and I can right click on a patient and say modify patient card. And if I say switch to full version, I can now delete the entire patient. Keep in mind the editing or uh, deleting your patient card or your actual patient is really only done in your standalone CSI 8. In other words, if you're connected to practice management software, that's not really going to be an option. Okay, let's go back to uh, preferences. 2748. Allowing um, images to be assigned to another patient. This is really only used with standalone. In other words, if you're connecting through a practice management software, you won't have the option to move patients in this fashion. Uh, and I'll cover a localized image at another time. 